Today we're going to be looking at some mobile games. Let's talk about that. Wait a minute. Today we're going to be looking at some mobile games. Let's go. Yeah, that, that seems much more appropriate. Zen Mobile Rhythm Edition Cell phones, where should I begin? Well, I remember about over maybe 15 years ago that, you know, cell phones were not as powerful as they are now. I mean, they can take and make calls, but they can barely even text with your Sony Ericsons, your Blackberries, your Nokia phones. Fast forward to now, where phones have definitely gotten a lot more sophisticated. I mean, year after year, they keep getting upgraded over and over again, or each iteration builds upon the last. No matter how trivial some upgrades may seem to justify a yearly release. Why the hell did I do an accent? Well, for quite some time now, we've been able to listen to music, watch videos, and to a certain extent, play games. Now, I'm not gonna get into a debate on what constitutes as a game. But, for all intents and purposes, and as far as I am concerned, mobile apps can be games. Now, I found that the allure of mobile gaming comes from its, well, mobility and ease of access. When you grab your phone, it's typically always on. All you gotta do is swipe, and tap the app and it's already going. Now, personally, I found that there are a certain genre of games that actually work very well on, well, a mobile device. Today, specifically, we will be looking at rhythm games or music games. Before we continue, I'd like to point out there's a couple of ways you can play these sort of games. Depending on factors like the size of the device or the type of game, you may consider switching up how to hold your handheld. Most of the time, we're prone to holding our smartphones like traditional gaming controllers, but you might find it much more beneficial to have it lying flat on a surface and tapping on the screen like a keyboard. For example, I currently am using the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. For particular rhythm games, I find it easier to tap the screen while it's laying flat. Though with my previous smartphone, the Asus Zenfone 2, it curved at the back making it difficult to use that style. The wobbly little lunk forced me to utilize the controller type scheme. I recommend trying out different methods depending on your needs. Now let's look at our first game. Dynamics up first we have Dynamics, or Dynamics, by the developer C4Cat, the former pronunciation probably being correct and the latter sounding like a blender. Advertised as a pocket-sized arcade experience, Dynamics is one of those rhythm games that you just jump right into without too much fluff. Visually, it definitely presents itself as an arcade experience with the user interface and the menu designs. Scrolling through the song list looks and feels similar to games like Dance Dance Revolution. Like most mobile rhythm games, the music selection process provides a preview of the track along with being able to choose difficulty. And this little dude here looks like he enjoys every moment of it. The main aspect that determines what separates one music game from another is the gameplay style and mechanics. During a song, your focus will be split between three sections of the screen, the bottom of the screen and both of the sides. Differently sized and colored panels will head towards these zones and you must tap on them in time for successful input. You will find yourself tapping, holding, or dragging your fingers in accordance to the type of panels. This layout and input style is pretty standard amongst mobile rhythm games. All you have to do is make sure your taps are well-timed in a stationary field. Dynamics does throw a curveball once in a while in the form of a sliding toggle on the side that you drag up and down to catch panels. With all these parts to focus on, sessions can get hectic on higher difficulties. Imagine the amount of finger gymnastics you would have to do. Well, you know what? Here's a quick demo of how a session can go. Here we have a song being played that actually uses the toggle mentioned before. Ignoring my fingernails that are due for cutting and the stray dried skin hanging off my finger, this demonstration is standard fare on the normal difficulty setting. This game will definitely put your reflexes and rhythm to the test as you'll have to focus on incoming signals from three different directions. The additional dimensions throws me into a tizzy at times and has me considering this to be one of the more hectic rhythm games I've played on a mobile device. Dynamics is interesting in that it also promotes regular events that allows you to unlock more songs. The only way you can grow your playlist is to keep leveling up and this itself can be a pain if you just want to hit new song after new song. The game also implements a system in which you have to download each song again if you reboot the app. The loading time isn't that long, but it can be a bit of an annoyance. Before we move on, here's a sample of the type of tracks in the game.
As you can hear, it's a lot of trance and EDM mixed in with some new age sounds. You will find that a lot of popular rhythm games incorporate these musical styles. The next game on the list is no exception. La Nota. I consider this one to be a nice gem I found during my browsing of the App Store. Well, actually it was more or less recommended to me through Play Store algorithms, but still I found it. Brought to you by Noxy Games Incorporation, La Nota is a story-driven rhythm game that focuses on two gifted children out to revive a lifeless world through the power of music. We are presented with a charming storybook-like display that is further accentuated by the aged paper designs of the menus. Overall progression and song obtaining is pretty much done through progressing through the story. Each stage presents a whimsical or brilliant cutscene of the children's journey as you complete every song. You also unlock items and collect these crystals called Notalium that sort of act as trophies of completion. Now how is the gameplay you ask? In Lenota, the system will literally take you for a spin. Instead of a standard stationary field of view, you are presented with the game's key item, the Notalium Tuner, a device used to restore things and places back to their former glory. The tuner will be constantly spinning, dipping, turning, and popping every which way as tappable panels flow from the center of the device to the outer rims. It is your job to tap, drag, or flick these panels to the song while adapting to the constant movement of the tuner. The design of this system makes me feel much more invested in the game story-wise as I feel like I am actually taking part of the adventure. I also feel myself much more enthusiastic and rhythmically involved with all the details. The visuals actually help me keep track of things much more easier despite the tuner moving constantly. Personally, I'm having a lot of fun with this. Other games provide you with a bland playing field, but here it's much more vibrant as you can see from this demo. The track list for Lenota certainly has some variety, but also has a focus of featuring composers and influences of Eastern Asia. Vocal tracks will have Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and at times English. Aside from that, it's the usual new age sound, but I assure you they all work really well for this game. Have a listen. Now I've been actually showing you the free trial version of Lenota. It comes with 30 second wait periods before a song, includes ads, and some content is kept away. The game itself is only $1.99 which I find is a pretty good deal with the work put into this. Though with that out of the way, onwards to the next game on the list. Ride Zero from Korean developer Load Complete, we have Ride Zero. Apparently, this is a spin off of another title they made, but we will be judging this one on its own merits. Ride Zero is a hybrid between rhythm and shooter game, though it is primarily a rhythm game with the aesthetics of a shooter. It is also story driven in the sense that you can only get more songs through story progression. Mainly focusing on Android and cyborgs involved in military factions, you can definitely see the influence on the menu designs. It sort of gives you a sense you're in a hangar of some kind as you mess around with the displays. The game itself seems much more easier than others when you look at it on the surface. You have the basic tap to input style, but it seems to be much more lenient in Ride Zero. Typically, you'd have to hit the exact spot where the panel is when it reaches the rhythm line. Granted, there is one instance where it does seem to matter when it comes to dragging movements. As you can clearly see, the visuals aren't that of a traditional rhythm game. Instead of panels, you will be deflecting bullets and lasers with every successful input. You also have an HP bar to indicate how many times you can fail those inputs. You will also notice that there are sound effects with each deflection and swipe you perform. Honestly, I'm kind of torn between having the sound effects on or off because sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. The basic bullet deflection and swiping sounds literally sound like a ping pong ball being hit. At times, it kinda ruins the vibe. The good thing is that you can turn the sound effects off, but with the visuals, you may also notice something is lacking audibly. Though overall, it does play comfortably in your hands as you will be holding your device vertically. My main gripe with the game is how to progress. 
Traversing through the menu seems sort of tedious in the beginning, and progression through the story is somewhat of a pain because there are prerequisites other than completing a level to move forward. Then there are also functions like support characters that I still have no idea on how to use. Purchasing songs with the in-game money also becomes a hassle as each purchase raises the price of your next song exponentially. Basically, it feels like there's a lot of walls you have to bypass to fully enjoy the game. However, what I found in the song list isn't bad, and here are just a few samples. Again, you'll notice a pattern in the types of music that is prominent in these games. I personally find it all to be fitting, but I certainly understand if it's not to everyone's liking. Despite the gripes I have, Ride Zero is a rather solid rhythm game experience. You know, mobile games usually get a bad rep due to being associated with freemium marketing, but sometimes you will find a few quality apps that'll keep you busy while on the can, on a commute to work, or maybe in a waiting room. Hopefully you got something out of this video and perhaps I've shown you something worth a try. With all said and done, this is Zenmaster Wu signing off. Goodbye. Music on the go. A mobile experience. Rhythm in your hands. Thanks for watching. Currently, I am experimenting with new formats to test out my strengths and weaknesses. As of now, being in front of a camera still seems like an issue. Comment below if you like segments like these or suggest how else I can do better. Peace!